Thank you for joining me and the Caffeine and Commerce podcast. Uh, today's featured business is Boba Cream, a veteran-owned business that specializes in serving delicious boba tea and desserts with a commitment to quality and customer satisfaction. You can find Boba Cream at 131 West Commerce Street, Hernando, Mississippi. For more information, go to msbobacream.com. Joining me today is owner and bubble tea extraordinaire, Ryan Dern. Ryan, thanks for joining me today. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> yes, sir. I appreciate you doing this, and uh, congratulations on being the uh, the first the first featured business on this epic podcast. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're gonna we want to get to know you a little bit, but this this podcast is definitely geared towards the business. Mm. You know, uh, we're not trying to make this a tutorial. I'm not going to ask you how you budget. But uh, yeah. <laughs> we want the audience to really get a good grasp and overview of what your business is and what it offers. So right out of the gate, you know, in your words, well, give me a brief overview of what Boba Cream is and, and what it does. Uh, yeah. So Boba Cream, we're a custom tea shop here in Hernando. I think we're the first one. Or, well, there are plenty of tea shops, but we're the first uh, custom bubble tea shop. And... Uh, I think overall, we really try to bend over backwards to make sure we get real good drinks uh, going out the door for everyone. And we understand that it's like a new concept here in Hernando. So a large part of my day is explaining like what it is and what we can do with uh, some of our drink and food items. Um, but uh, what we really pride ourselves on is, uh, you know, getting the, that first drink right every time uh, and, you know, having uh, repeat customers and stuff like that. So. Tell us a little more of some of the food that you that you offer. Yeah, so we do uh, we do a lot of uh, Pacific Islander food. Um, we do our big thing is like masubi, which is like uh, a savory sweet type. Of, uh, it's almost like a hand, like a, a finger sandwich with like seaweed. It's pretty good, and then uh, our masubi bowls. So we uh, it's just kind of like a more expanded version of. Uh, like a hot sushi that we do, okay. and that's pretty popular here, surprisingly. So, yeah, when you when I see you post up some pictures of your of your daily specials mm -hmm. or whatever you got going on, you definitely get some engagement on there. Yeah, we're definitely we're so we're down there like all the time uh, trying to come up with new stuff that we think that uh, our customers are gonna like. And uh, so far, we've been really lucky with everything that we've come up with, um, and we're constantly trying to make new stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, we are like a, we're a small business. We're still in our first year and, um, the amount of growth that we've had with our menu and just like, uh, how our stores evolved within this first year has been really, really awesome. Your store is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's well designed in there. You're very creative on how you present. And, uh, <clears throat> also I think if, you know, let's say I walk in once every two weeks or something, yeah. it's always moved around yeah. and shifted and you're always playing around with that. But you also got games. What are some of the games? It's, like you're definitely making it to, to have a community vibe in there for people to not only patronize yeah. your business with uh, purchasing your product, but also hanging out. Yeah. Um, so we definitely try to make it like a real comfortable environment. We try to play... Uh, Good music. It's always like we're rolling uh, through like uh, island music or uh, for me, like in the morning, I like to do like 80s hair metal, <laughs> like when I'm making everything in there. Um, 90s alternative. Yeah. So like the music is pretty good in there. Um, we uh, definitely put a bunch of games out there. So we have like Uno, Monopoly deal or no deal. Uh, Jenga. We actually like let people come in and like decorate like the Jenga pieces and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool for me at the end of the day, I go in and see like what people wrote on it about the store or something. Yeah. So that's cool. We also have like a local community board where uh, people can come in and put their cards up. And so everybody kind of just gravitates to the board and sees, you know, like, mm -hmm. oh, what small businesses are here in Hernando or that. So all that stuff's real cool. We enjoy it. And you have... QR codes all over the place. Oh, yeah. That will take people directly <laughs> to Google so they can literally review your business right then and there. For sure. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, it's still that that portion's still going slow. I think I feel it's kind of important to do that organically. Like I don't like to hassle people about, hey, review our restaurant and this and that. So when we do get a review, it's like so it's kind of more rewarding because it's something yeah. that we earn through our work uh and our you know service to the community. And uh 
it's just more authentic when we get it. So we really enjoy getting those reviews. Well, I appreciate the, a portion of the forwardness because in my mind, what it's saying is, hey, we want to give you the quickest avenue yeah. to even complain. Yeah. Like you're not afraid of, hey, if we give you bad service, sorry, but hey, here's the, go to Google and do your thing. Now yeah. I'm not encouraging people to give you <laughs> bad reviews, but yeah. a lot of people might be afraid to just make it so easy. Uh, and I, I feel like that just shows confidence in that you guys, you know, you're going to deliver and satisfy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I appreciate that. Now, um, to, to kind of go backwards a little bit, sure. uh, <clears throat> I know you're a veteran. Mm -hmm. And then I know this ties into the origin story of, of the business in a way. <laughs> right. Give us a brief uh, story on that. Yep. Did uh, the Asia the Asia leg for a while, probably, man, uh between like eight and 10 years, we we're out there, maybe longer. Um, and then we came back to the States. I was home for like two weeks and then went on my last deployment for the Air Force and then uh, realized that, I, you know, maybe it was time to move on to something else. So that's how we kind of, in that transition of getting out from the Air Force, we moved to Memphis because I got op offered a, a good job opportunity working on a government contract. And uh it was similar to what I, in scope to what I was doing in the Air Force, and not that I didn't love it, um, but I kind of left the Air Force to pursue something new, and I kind of felt like I was still uh, in the same boat, so I wanted to switch boats. And uh, mm -hmm. so decided to leave the contract, and I had no idea what we were going to do next. And my wife had been, you know, mentioning for years, oh, you know, her dream is to, like, start a bubble tea shop or or something similar in that scope. And I was like, hey, I got nothing going on. I'll do it. I'll open it up. So we open it up and uh, a lot of the items that we feature is all stuff that her and I have talked about or stuff that she's a big fan of or things that I'm a big fan of, whether we've been like, or something that we had tried in Korea or Guam or the Philippines or something like that. So something that we really love uh, when we were in Asia, we would, we love to showcase it in the store, bring it into the store and allow uh, people in our town to try it as well. Yeah, you're certainly delivering something very new yeah. and unique, but you're bringing it over here from there. Mm -hmm. This is stuff you experienced in a very authentic way. Didn't right, you? correct. Yeah, and we try to get it so close to how we experienced it. Like, we really try to do right by the items that we present in our store. So, like, try to make them as authentic as the ingredients, you know, that are allotted to us here. And some stuff, we do have to order it um, from those areas. But we have uh, pretty good... All of our families like, so spread out that it's 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 not hard to get a hold of, um, like, the good ingredients for it because they can just ship it to us because they, like, live in those areas. But, yeah. yeah. Luckily, we don't have to do too much of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've tried your product. It's delicious. Thank you. Big I appreciate fan. it. I was so excited <clears throat> to see boba cream coming, which leads me to my the next space I want to go to is uh, when you launched, and but when you signed that lease. And, oh, right. and I know you <laughs> now. We're friends, and yeah. I know that it was it was a hill to climb to to build to the to launch. <clears throat> Not to go into details on what the issues were. Yeah, but I definitely want to always approach these businesses as I think people are going to learn a lot if they hear challenges that other people experience. So right. you definitely had a, a, a challenge that leading up to finally launching for the community. Do you want to, do you want to share that with us? Uh, yeah. Um, so I guess actually t technically right now, as we speak is like, we're in the first week that, or, uh, this was the time last year that we were supposed to open like that we had predicted that we would open like the week of the A Fair because we just had it coming up. And so for me, in my mind, and now on paper, it doesn't feel this way, but in my mind, it, we've been trying to be a business for an entire year as of like this week and have successfully done it. But the official on paper is like sometime in September. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's hard. So like wanting to, in your head, you have all these great ideas of when it's going to open and you want to do it at the right time and all this, and it never seems to work out that way. Um, but it's, uh, it, for me, I appreciated the challenge because if you can make it out of like a difficult situation, especially like in your first year of business and then now going into what's supposedly our peak season. So like this is our time to shine is through the summer. 
um, I'm excited to see what um, what opportunities are going to present itself going forward for our business this summer. So, yeah, the the challenge for you that I know about took a lot of patience, right? Basically, it was it was a uh, the building of the store uh, that yeah. that really and added to yeah. the time and and put you behind a little bit. You want to? Can you yeah. elaborate on that? Um, yeah. So, like like you had mentioned earlier, um, it's always changing in there. Um, so the initial setup, you know, it took a while to like a long time um, to get where we wanted to get, and finally, like coming out of the last week of summer, we had finally got the store set up just enough to where we can basically open and operate as a business, like very little decoration. Like it it did not look, it didn't look anything like we wanted it to. And now it's slowly starting to get that way, Mm. but there's so many little challenges. It's like almost, you feel like weekly there's like a challenge that you have to overcome, I think. And um, you're probably discovering new issues that you didn't know you had to. Exactly. Like a coding, an inspection, something. Then they point out, some issues and you're like, well, I didn't know that. Yeah. You that was a thing, so, but now I do. <laughs> yeah. You don't know what you don't know. That's right. the thing. And so it's <clears throat> difficult because nobody's there like holding your hand. It's all stuff you have to learn on the fly and you hope that you don't mess anything big up along the way. Um, so I so think it was, it was several months for you. Several months. Yeah, yeah. man. I want to say, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't want to be wrong. So anywhere, so we open anywhere between seven and like nine months later than we had expected. Yeah. yeah. That and takes some patience. Yeah. And oh. still paying rent and that whole time and everything. And then still uh, like putting out money financially to get your shop in line with what just the basic setup that you need to get out there and get your product and serve your customers. So that, yeah. I, I commend your style of business where you absolutely need a brick and mortar. Mm. It's a high-end investment on the front end because you need kitchen and supplies and everything. And you still, you don't know when you finally unlock that door and, and turn on the open sign, you don't know what's coming. You know, I compare to my my situation, you know, I slowly built my business online and I have clients, I'm a service-based, you know, producer. And so by the time I started my LLC, I already knew I had a base yeah, and then built it. And then I knew I could open up a studio and take it to the next level because I already had stuff to take in. It's a much softer growth. But for people that just put in the time to build a store, turn on that open sign and still have no idea if anyone's going to show up. Yeah. And then having to w- and, and then having to picture that moment for several months as you're dealing with more and more you know, speed bumps on the way. Yeah, uh, that must have been stressful, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely nightmare fuel. But <laughs> we, yeah. I've kind of like got, I've gotten over that. Uh, we have a really good, we have a really strong customer base now. We have a lot of returning customers, and um, they are really like supportive of like all of our ideas. So it's almost like like a customer or like a business and customer uh, friendship because we do a lot of direct feedback and like, hey, you know, you like these products. What else could we bring here that you want to try or what else and, you know, mm-hmm. all that. So it's it's nice uh, to get that feedback and allow us uh, some opportunity to present some stuff that they would like to see here. Do you remember the first day? Oh, yeah. Or did you black <laughs> out because no. of stress? <laughs> uh, no, I remembered it. Yeah, that was... Uh, yeah, it was good. I am interested to know after all that build and, and patience and stress, yeah. that day that you finally unlocked the door and clicked on that open sign, what was that like? In retrospect now, um, <laughs> it, it, you know, at, at first I thought like, okay, well, this is it. All the hard work's done. Yeah, you right. know? <laughs> yeah sure. And then you, you open the store and, uh, you know, you just, I'm not going to lie. It was really hard. And I think like, From the beginning, I don't think we, uh, how do I say it? We really developed our product like throughout the year. So I imagine like the first time that we opened, it probably wasn't as good. And then we have like slowly like increased the value like of our product and how Mm -hmm. good it is and all that. And 
but it's, it's so terrifying. Um, I didn't even want to do it. Like, so I had to open the store, you know, uh, I, we've talked about it before where like, Hey, we spent all of our money <laughs> trying yeah. to put this place up. And, uh, the day that we opened, you know, we tried to go get money from the bank and they're like, Oh yeah, you're out of money. And we're like, Oh man. So we go, I go, I run home, I borrow uh, money from my daughter's piggy bank and put it in the register. Uh, and uh, I tell myself like, hey, it's, we got to open today. There's there's no tomorrow if you don't do it today. And it'll <laughs> never be perfect. And, yeah. And you need to operate to work out the bugs. Yep. You know? Yeah. So yeah, just put the money register, uh, flip the on sign in and people came in. I had no idea what I was doing. I had... I had maybe made like a few drinks here and there for friends. Like I had never operated in the shop, like with all the equipment and uh, to that scale, to that scale. Yeah. Never. Um, I don't even think we had all of our measurements down like mm. all the way. So I apologize if anybody got a really bad drink in that, like yeah, first I, half. <laughs> I mean, I, the first one I had was awful, right? Was, yeah. <laughs> no, but you got to work out those bugs, Yeah, you know, and I'm always going to relate to the people that sit across from me that are entrepreneurs in this podcast, because I experienced the same thing. You know, it took me forever to, I thought I had all the gear. Yeah. I thought I had everything needed and nope. And then, yeah, spent all my money in the yeah. bank. They said no more. Yeah. And, uh, and here I am. Uh, but then I had to start using my toys in order to yeah work out the bugs. So it was, it was several months of build, build, build uh, to the, when I finally had my ribbon cutting and launch. But even since then, yeah, uh, I'm always trying to upgrade and expand and, and just get better. It's, and that's all you can do, right? Yeah, the honing of the honing of one's craft. Yeah, yeah. And then hearing feedback helps, yep. right? So, you know, you said you have repeat customers. Oh yeah. Do they? Do they? Are they generous with their their like feedback with you? Always, yeah. yeah. But like we, uh, so they'll tell us uh, straight up, like I do not like this, or Ooh. I think it was better this way or another way. So, and that's what we really like. So we, you know, it doesn't really help us if we're like, Hey, what do you think? Or what would you like changes? They're like, Oh, it's great. Leave it as that. Like if mm. it is that way, truly phenomenal. Mm. But when people give us like true feedback, like, Oh, this wasn't for me. Like that only helps us make sure that they get a product. Cause we know personally, I know there is for sure. We can make something that is tailored for that individual, but not everything on our menu is going to fit for like uh, one person or another. So it helps us figure out what it is or like line up or lock down what type of flavors they like. So that way we can make, continue to increase like flavors mm -hmm. or increase like products that uh, people want to see or to try. So, so that's important yeah. to us. Yeah. And you can't, you can't have one for everybody, you know, the, yeah. and, and what you offer is very niche. So yeah. Yeah, you know, it's you can't tailor to everybody, but I, I we can I, definitely try. <laughs> yeah, because explain a little bit what bo boba tea is or bubble tea. Um, you know, what I when I try to explain it to friends, it's it's you know it's either milk or black mm. chai tea. No, we uh, use a Assam. Like so, for us, it's pretty easy. So we do all the hard work for you. Um, we have everything that's on the menu. We've gone ahead and tested it out. We found. Mm tested it three or four different ways. So we've tested with like green tea, black tea, oolong tea, like, and then just one drink. We'll try it with all, all three teas and figure out, okay, well, which one tastes the best? This one. All right. Well, so that'll be, um, like the standard. So if somebody comes in and doesn't know what they're doing or what to order, we've already done the legwork and be like, okay, well, this pairs with this. So it'll be like, oh, this is, a tea that pairs with this specific fruit. And then we've tried it with, you know, these different popping pearls or stuff like that. So and gummies. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yep. Uh, yes. Or jellies, you call them. Jellies. Yeah. Jellies. Yeah. So, and they come with this big straw. So yep. as you're drinking, my personal favorite is a milk tea base. Right. I uh, like the, uh, the, the creaminess of it. Uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll explain what I like, what yeah, my favorite sure. is. So <laughs> it's milk tea, but it's the peach flavor. Mm -hmm. So you add peach flavoring to that milk tea. And then the popping pearls come in various uh, flavors. Mm -hmm. And I like the, the peach popping pearls. Now, you're probably thinking, what is a popping pearl? You know, it's, I don't know how to explain it. You can do it better. But <laughs> it's it's this little bubble with juice in it. Yeah. And you got a big straw, so they fit up the straw. 
And then you pop them in your mouth and then it adds just another blast of flavor, right? Am yeah, I right? Am yeah, I right you got there? it. Exactly. That's yeah. exactly it. <laughs> and then some of the jellies now, you know. Yeah, those are a little different. Um, those are kind of like if somebody, if you went to like a family cookout and somebody made finger jello, but the jello is like just cut up into little tiny ribbons and a little bit harder. Mm. And then has like um, almost like a slimy taste on it. I don't know. It's not <laughs> the way I, I guess I would want to describe it. But yeah. But they're they're before, good though. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. That's actually one of my favorites is a coconut jelly. So I put it in like all my drinks that I make. Yeah, so you have all the all these different flavors of the stuff that you add that you either pop or eat. Yeah. And then the different teas and then the different flavors to the teas. Yeah. It really is. Uh, and the way you have it laid out in the menu is very easy to understand. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've made that menu so many different times. Yeah. We even got a bigger TV just because the menu is so big. And Yeah, because if you have, you have a lot of options. We have a lot, yeah. So... That can get confusing on a on a on a screen or a menu. Most definitely. But I think you lay it out pretty good. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> uh, but but also you're there to help, like you yeah, said. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, our staff knows all the drinks pretty well too. Mm -hmm. um, and we even like now we've even designed the layout of like our counter to where we can step away and like help you make a better decision or help you. Like, if you have any questions, we have, like, a little cubby there where that somebody will pop out and be like, hey, we're here to help you figure out yeah. what it is you want to try. Now you brought up your staff. Mm -hmm. Let's break into that. You know, what sure. kind of – what do you do to create that positive culture, you know, in the back, behind the scenes with your with your staff? And how many, how many employees do you have? Ooh, how many do we have right now, uh, today? <laughs> is that going to change tomorrow? <laughs> um, you know, and we never know because we're always hiring, but we're we're trying to find like the the right fit down there um, to even where we've uh, kind of like tightened the reins as to what we would like people coming in the door with. Uh, just because it is a small operation, and we only have a select amount of spots to to fill uh, throughout the day, so we really want to kind of put our best foot forward and. Um, I guess have people. I, I think it's hold on. I think it's like a little different because we're not a corporation; we're a small business. So, like, and we do run really lean. Um, so we because I know you're, you're you're putting in a lot of hours. Yeah, you are there, right? Th those who list, are listening and watching, you go there during the day. The owner is going to be there most likely serving yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, and that's like we could. I could probably step away, but I mean, I I have to work. Like I love it, mm. and it's to me. And I know you understand this. It's like literally the developing and honing of your craft because that is you know what my job is, and I always want to be new and like cutting edge for our drinks uh, for our community, and I just don't feel like I can do that sitting at home from my couch, like. Yeah. But, um with yeah like with that yeah. that's when you when you ask me about like the people that we hire and, and the staff like that they're they are we hire people that get it like they're constantly trying new drinks and they're like hey have you tried this or hey this is a good idea so they they kind of like internalize like what it is our business is about and try to provide like they're on the same page as us and that's mm -hmm. why we, we really like them and we hire yeah. them you know? and you and you train them on yeah on how everything to, how it's, to best you know, help someone pick flavors and right. We so yeah. So we give them. Well, for me, like I'll give them hints, like, hey, this is a better way that we can like kind of get people to figure out. It's more like kind of like a like a strategy. Hey, like um, these drinks are good. If somebody new comes in and they're asking about this, let's kind of like steer them this way for their first experience to make sure that it's good. And then after that, you know, we'll. Mm -hmm. try and move them up like i guess like the hierarchy of like how bubble teas go because they a lot of people are, i guess are nervous to try like milk teas but they're totally okay with like fruit teas or the mm -hmm. boba shots and stuff and that's fine so we want to make sure that we get them something good so every time they come in and and i see them it'll be like their fourth or fifth time getting that same drink because they don't know what to order and be like hey do you like this drink and they'll be like oh yes or no and be like hey well why don't, why don't you try one of these this time? Because these are very good. We're very good at these as well. And this seems to be like- Based off what you do like, I think this would be a good fit for you. Exactly, right? yeah. yeah. And uh, not only that is like, we're constantly uh, tweaking recipes and stuff. So like, it gets real detailed, even like down to like minute details. Like, hey, this is how we're gonna, this is how we want you to like swirl a cup. Or this is the easiest and fastest way that we found to do this particular drink. Because some drinks take quite a while to make. 
And uh, we're pretty we're pretty happy with the speed that we've developed for our mm. drinks. And so if I can find like a shortcut in time, I'm going to share that with my staff because they're, they're going to appreciate, you know, just getting back like that extra 30 seconds or whatever. Cause it does sometimes get busy. In yeah. There. I've yeah. been in there where it pops. Yeah. You know, you and I are chit chatting all of a sudden, you know, family of five walks in yeah. and a couple more. That's all it takes to fill that place up. Yeah. Next thing you know, you guys are screaming. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, Ryan, <laughs> talk to you later. Yeah. <laughs> So what's the future look like? You know, do you have any plans to, so I know it's many. so early and yeah. of course you have big dreams. I know I do for my thing, but you know, over the next year, where would you like to see things? Uh, well, let's see. So this is something I think about all the time. And then we hit, uh, with our business, we always hit, it's almost like cross roads. Uh, every couple months, we're like, all right, well, which direction do we want to go and what equipment do we want to purchase to get us there? But July. So I'm hoping by July that we can blend the world of soft serve ice cream and bubble tea for summer. Yeah. that's So that's like my immediate goal that I would love to you do just, that. You have ice cream now. You just we do. That. Yeah. We you have, have a little cooler. Yep. And they're they're different flavors. Yeah, so, I mean, and even uh, ice cream from different countries too, which is really cool. So you're really differentiating yourself from our local, you know, Area 51. Yeah, in for the sure. Dip. And we definitely don't want to step on their toes because we love those guys. So, <laughs> so yeah, so do I. And, and yeah. I think they'd appreciate the fact that you have something different offered. Yeah. And, like, give us some of the flavors you have. Uh, right now, so we're doing uh, ube, which is like a, a Filipino. Uh, sweet potato is the best way I could put it. It doesn't taste like a sweet potato. It's good all, all in its own right. But we just, yeah, we do a lot of exotic flavors. We do like uh, Filipino style mango uh, ice cream. Uh, we have a milk tea and boba ice cream. Uh, we have Thai tea, which is like a real popular uh, boba flavor that we have down there. So we turned it into an ice cream. And matcha, which is like we're constantly making. More Are you matcha. making the? Ice we're cream? making it. We make it back there by hand. Everything. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. 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 So. So that's really good. Yeah. And then, so now you're 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 thinking of ways to blend. Yeah. So I mean, it's always been like even if you look at the design of our logo, you can tell like it's always been like our dream to meld those two together, which is why we have the name Bobo Cream. Now, had I known that these uh, soft serve machines were so ridiculously expensive, I might have I might have <laughs> went a different direction, but it's yeah, always- Yeah, because your logo has an ice cream cone. Yeah, it does, right? yeah. yeah. And then uh, people constantly come in and ask like, hey, do you have ice cream? And we're like, uh, so for the longest time, we'd be like, no, we don't have it yet, but we want to. So yeah. we left- uh, anytime someone new comes in, we're always like, not yet, but we will. And then they'll, we'll be like, but, you know, Area 51 or whoever, they have ice cream down there and it's mm. really good. So now if we don't have a flavor that they want for ice cream, they'll be like, oh, do you have, you know, chocolate or strawberries? Like, no, we don't do that. But, you know, right, you down, head the down, right down the street. Yeah. We uh, send them there. Yeah. You get sure. some great stuff at Area 51. Yeah. Shout out to Lemon Ice Box. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Well, man, this has been fantastic, you know, learning more about your business. You know, if if they're in closing, there was one thing you'd love to tell the community about your business or, mm. or how you feel about being here, what would that be? Mm, Putting you right on the my, spot. I know, friend. right. Um, <laughs> well, I would not want to be anywhere else. I'm glad that we are here in Hernando. Um, We've gotten such, I would let, I guess I just really like to thank the community for supporting us for it's almost been an entire year. Mm -hmm. The lights are still on. We're still paying bills. So thank you for that. Um, we are excited to continue to grow and to serve our community. And one of the big things that we're really excited about is getting into a position to where we can start giving back locally. So like doing small events, giving out, you know, like gift certificates or sponsoring sports teams or whatever. And I feel like we're almost mm -hmm. there. That's mm -hmm. like, for me, that's a real big passion for me. And I would love, like, I don't, it, yeah, it would be great to make a lot of money, but I really, my focus is I'd really love to be able to get involved and do community mm -hmm. support and all that. So well, you've I, already started, sir, with me. A little, yeah, with you. So, and we've, so, we've done a little ones here and there, but I would yeah. love to do something bigger eventually, like when we could afford it. So, so yeah, you, you helped me with a door prize sponsorship That's level right. for the Sunset Square, Sunset, Sunset on the Square uh, music series here in uh, June. Anyone that doesn't know, every Thursday, we have live music at 
in front of the uh, courthouse, um, and everyone comes and chills out on the lawn, and it's a good time. Yeah, there's various different ways you can help sponsor it. You could help with the cups and the shirts, and there's different levels. Well, there's a door prize level that I bought into, and uh, you were nice enough to donate me with five ten dollar gift cards. And uh, that will be half of the door prize I give when someone wins. So that's a great example of the a little thing that goes a long way. Yeah. Uh, and that will bring traffic to your store. I mean, you're, you're giving a couple drinks to a person. Yeah. But then, look, we got to look at both sides. We're also business people. Correct. So yeah. that brings in foot traffic. Your name's announced in front of 100 people. Uh, so you've already you've already started a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm looking forward to that that. That moment you have an event in a booth, and I'll be right there in line. Oof, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would you be able to? Would you be able to remotely serve? You probably like, would limit a menu. You know, if let's, are we talking let's, about let's, like hypothetically, let's say you're at the farmers market? Yeah, right. Would that? Could you see a possibility of that? Oh, I want to so badly. Yeah. Like, and I've already done all the research to do it. And um, we thought about doing it for the A fair, but the I think the price didn't line up with like. How do I say it? I don't think that juice was worth the squeeze this time around. Maybe next year, mm -hmm. but uh, we definitely we're looking at other events and Water Tower Fest. I know, yeah, that would be nice. I'd yeah. have to check and see. I know everything, so we're almost to that spot. Like this month and next month is where we have to decide where we go. Like in the next five years, and what's going to get us there the fastest and most efficiently. So that's why I'm excited for the summer. We've been waiting all winter for this summer and we're it's gonna it was a grind all through winter and we're lined it up just right to where we can figure out which direction we're gonna go with all that and i know you wanted to go last summer but yeah. hey the way it worked out is you were given fall and winter yeah into spring to work out the bugs and, mm -hmm. and, and really get your feet and your your message and your in your your brand right yeah. across so now you're Way more ready this summer than you would have been last summer. Absolutely. So good for you, man. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you bring. Ooh. <laughs> so uh, also, man, I appreciate your time today. I hope a lot of people, you know, learn more about your business and, and hopes that they go patronize you now. Yes, sir. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Hey, thank you. All right. Take care, everybody.